I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig, and I'm about to change out the rear wheel oil seal on my 2007 Dodge 3500. This is the life behind our adventures, so we always try to keep it in tip top shape. And I noticed that I had a little bit of oil residue on the back side of my brake disc along with the wheel itself. First thing I'm going to do is chalk my front wheel so that it doesn't move. And I've also already jacked up the rear of the pickup to get this rear wheel off the ground. I like to also put in a stand under there just in case my jack fails, the whole thing doesn't crash to the ground. What I'm gonna do next is go ahead and remove my dually wheels on the rear, and it's a 15 16 lug nut on that. With the wheels removed, I can now access my brake caliper. I'm gonna to need to remove it so that I can slide this whole assembly off. There are two bolts on the back of the caliper that are 13 16 and they may take a little bit of leverage to get them off as they should be on pretty tight. Once it's off, I'm gonna go ahead and hang my brake caliper. I like to just use zip ties. You definitely don't wanna hang it by the hose though. It's pretty heavy and you could definitely tear that hose. So make sure to get the weight off the caliper and hanging it by something like this rather than the hose itself that's attached to. With my brake caliper now hanging by zip ties, it's out of the way. I need to remove my axle shaft. These are eight bolts that hold it on. They're a 9 16 Now, when you loosen these and pull the shaft out, there's gonna be oil that drains out. So be ready with a drain pan underneath to catch any oil that you're gonna lose. It's really nice if you're not doing this in the wind because then your oil isn't blowing everywhere. With the axle shaft removed, you can now see that you have a clip that is retaining a key behind it. Before I remove this clip, I like to count how many threads are sticking out so that when I put it back together, I kind of have an idea where it goes. To remove it, I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver and stick it underneath the retainer and just loosen it and work my screwdriver around the entire exterior of it. With the clip removed, I can now access my key. After the key's been removed, I can now spin this nut off. You can see that it'll have some holes throughout the nut, and what I'm going to do is stick a punch in one of those holes and just tap it loose and get it started. And then with my fingers, I'll be able to loosen it right off. Now that the nut is off and the parking brake's released, I can go ahead and slide this whole assembly off. After I removed the entire assembly off the axle, I noticed that the back of my seal stayed on. So what I'm gonna do is just with a chisel and a hammer, I'm just gonna tap it off of the back. So now we can see the seal that we're gonna replace. And to remove this, I'm gonna take a punch and I'm just gonna to try to punch on the edge of it to put a little bit of a crease in it so that I can get a flathead screwdriver back there and pry it out. And this is the seal that we're gonna replace. Now you can see the bearing inside of there. Since I pulled this all apart, I've definitely dropped a little bit of stuff, crud that was inside the drum here into this bearing. So while I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, inspect the bearings, make sure that they don't look like they've ever been overheated or that there's any notching or anything like that on them. And then I'm gonna reinstall the bearing inside and then put the new seal on. One thing I'm gonna do is clean the entire exterior 
and inside because you can see this line going around of my old oil that was seeping out. So after I replace this and I drive it, I wanna double check, make sure that all this is dry. But in order to do that, I need to get everything that's on there off so that I'm not looking at old oil thinking it's still leaking. A couple other things I'm gonna do after I clean the inside is on the exterior where my axle shaft bolts to, this is a gasket surface and I'm just gonna make sure it's clean. I'm gonna take a razor blade and just get off all the old gasket material from this surface. And then on the axle itself, I'm gonna take emery cloth and where the oil seal rides and mates up against the axle, I'm gonna make sure that that whole surface is clean and there's not any debris on it and just clean it with some emery cloth. I'm now ready to install the bearing on the backside and I'm gonna go ahead and set it in. One thing I like to do is once it's in, I'm gonna go ahead and drip a little bit of the gear oil that I'm using in the rear differential into that bearing just so that they're pre-lubed a little bit. With the bearing installed, I'm now going to install my oil seal. And this is important that you get it in there straight because if it's not straight or you screw it up putting it in, this is gonna continue to leak for you. What I'm gonna do is with a paper towel, I'm just gonna cover the seal and I've got a block that I'm gonna put over it that spans across the whole seal. I'm just gonna work around tapping it in the whole time. The reason I put the paper towel there is so that I don't get any crap falling in there as I'm tapping it in. With the seal installed, I'm now ready to assemble everything back together. All right, I've slid this back on after I put the seal in it and now I'm getting ready to install my outer bearing. I'm just gonna make sure it's clean like I did the other. And then I'm gonna also put a little bit of gear oil on it before installing it. I'm just gonna slide it back in. After installing the bearing, I'm now ready to install my nut back on. I'm gonna go ahead and just spin it on, and then once it gets tight, I'm gonna take the punch just like I did when I took it off and tighten it back on with the punch. One thing that I did on the nut, before I took it off, I did make a mark on where it sits on the axle so that when I put it back together, all I did was line that mark back up and I counted the number of threads that were exposed, and that's exactly where it sat before I took it off. I also am double checking, making sure that it's tight, not too tight, not too loose, because who knows what could have happened in the process of taking it off or maybe where you caught the threads when you put it back on, maybe it's not gonna line exactly up. So don't just go by the mark, but it's definitely a good starting point. Next, I'm gonna take my key. I'm gonna go ahead and insert it back in. And then I'm taking my retaining clip and I'm going to put that back on same way I took it off, just working it around the axle threads all the way on. Another thing that I like to do is try to add a little bit of oil back into my hub, just so it's not dry right when I start driving. There wasn't a lot to come out, so you don't wanna overfill it, but I'm gonna add just a little bit. The last thing I'm gonna do before I install my axle shaft is clean this surface again with just a little bit of brake cleaner on a paper towel just to make sure that it's free of any debris. And then what I have here is an RTV silicone gasket maker. That's what I'm gonna to use to replace the original gasket that was on this. I'm just gonna take the tube and start on the outside. And I'm just gonna work this around the entire surface. With my gasket on that mating surface and the mating surface of my axle shaft clean, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall those together. When I go to install my bolts back on that hold on the axle shaft, I'm gonna put blue Loctite on them, just so I know that they're not gonna back out. With my axle shaft installed and I've started all of the bolts around it, I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down. 
I don't like to use a power tool to get my final torque. So by hand, I'm gonna go around and make sure these are all torqued. All right, with my axle shaft torqued and installed, I'm now going to go and install the brake caliper back onto the disc. We've got the brake caliper now installed. Last step, putting the wheels back on and torquing those to proper spec. One additional thing that I like to do after doing this job, since I lost a little bit of oil, I like to park it on a side hill where I can let oil run back into this axle hub here and try to fill it before I drive a long distance with not a lot of oil in there. Kind of speeds that process up. After I drive for 10 or 20 miles, I'm going to go ahead and check my rear differential, make sure my oil level is still at the correct spot. If it's not, add a little bit to it. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Again, I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.